Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here, and it's time to do a hands-on and first impressions of the all-new Razer from Motorola. Yes, just like that old Razer flip phone, they've created it into a modern day phone with a foldable display. With the hands-on, I wanna take a close look at that bendable display, check out some of the features of the phone, and even test out if I can slam the phone closed to end a call. So the new Motorola Razr has two displays, that front display when closed, 2.7 inches, and then a 6.2 inch OLED display once you open it on up. This is a 21 to nine aspect ratio. Now you have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 710 processor with six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage. Now it does not have an IP rating, however, it is splash proof with water resistant nano coating. And here's a close look at the razor folding and with that folding mechanism you'll see the display actually kind of goes into the hinge there which allows it to actually unfold flat and not actually have a crease when it is unfolded which is pretty fantastic and a great bit of engineering on motorola's part on the inside the sides are actually stainless steel which collapse on top of each other so the screen doesn't actually get hit at all so you can collapse the phone fairly hard and not have to worry about the display actually getting hurt. When I first closed the phone, I was pretty surprised at how premium it actually felt. I was expecting a more plasticky feel to it, but it actually felt premium when closing. The hinge didn't feel loose at all. One thing that Motorola really focused on was making it a form factor that fit really well in your pocket, and it is very comfortable having it in your pocket when it is closed. Or of course, if you want to put it in a purse, it is extremely portable and easy to flip out. And when you do have it actually flipped out, it's very well balanced. So the Razer does have a 2,510 milliamp hour battery, which seems smaller, especially when you compare it to other flagships. And I think with this form factor, it's going to be fine. It's both supposed to get you through a full day. I will need some more hands-on time to really test battery. And of course, more content to come on the Razer. Be sure you click that subscribe button. And most people are thinking the battery is located in the chin. However, it's not. There's actually two batteries, one at the top and one at the bottom half, which actually does help with weight balance. Now inside that chin, you do have a speaker grill, a single firing speaker, which does actually get really loud. I was impressed. I listened to a song and was actually kind of blown away at how loud it got. You also have that fingerprint scanner in the chin. There's some antennas in there, your Wi-Fi, and of course a USB-C port. And after talking with Motorola, I was really impressed with how confident they were in the durability of the Razer, especially because you're gonna be opening and closing it all the time. Not only that, but of course, when you go ahead and close it really hard, if you're maybe angry after a phone call or something, uh, they were confident that the screen's not gonna get touched. They have a mechanism where the sides are gonna collapse on each other and the screen will be untouched. And of course, I also wanted to give you an idea of what it sounds like when you close it. So here's just a quick clip of that. You still do have some of Motorola's famous actions just chopped twice for the flashlight. You can twist to open up the camera as well. And while that camera is on open, if you flip to that front facing camera, you do have a five megapixel camera on the front, which you can have with the phone open. However, if you do wanna go ahead and use that main camera sensor, you can do so and use that front screen as a viewfinder. So nice that they give you that option. Use the volume rocker to take a picture or just smile. It does have a smile to capture feature. And then with the camera open, you can actually open it and continue using it. If you have an incoming call, it will show up on that front display. You can answer it from there, or of course, like a flip phone, just go ahead and flip it on open and that call will be answered. And yes, of course, you can just go ahead and fold it on close. It will end the call. Another nice action with that front screen is if you have an incoming text message, you can just press on that icon, swipe up, and it will give you some quick shortcuts to answer the text or use your voice to answer. And then, of course, you can just open up the phone and go to that text messaging thread to answer it. And no, you can't use full apps on that front screen. Motorola saw it as an opportunity to use it in a quick way, such as checking notifications, a quick reply to a message or an email, maybe control some music. And then if you go ahead and go into an app from that front screen, let's say you open up an email, when you flip open that phone, you have the full email app already open and ready to go. 
And it was kind of nice putting it in my pocket when it was closed because of how much smaller it was. The footprint's a lot less in your pocket. Or of course, maybe you want to put it in a purse and such. It's not going to take up as much space as a candy bar style phone. And then of course, I found when taking it out of my pocket to flip it open, it took a little bit of time to kind of get that motion down with one hand to kind of put my thumb underneath that top lid, flip it open. So I think there's a bit of a learning curve for that, but I think that's just because I haven't done it in so long. So I think I will easily learn how to actually flip that open with one hand after a few attempts. And after my hands on time with the Razer, I really like it. I'm happy they went with this form factor over maybe the phone to tablet form factor. I think it's important for foldables and you're not gonna see one specific foldable design. And Motorola, of course, with the iconic Razer that they had one of the most popular flip phones back in the day. So they have that nostalgia feel. They also went with the design. And you could tell the engineers that have been around Motorola for a long time are really into this device. Worth mentioning, they do have a traditional Razer mode. It is a little bit hidden in the settings, but once you get to it, the top half, actually you can't touch on it. So you use the buttons and it actually works. You can get to different settings. You can go ahead and type a number and make a phone call. It will actually just go into the standard calls. You can jump into your uh, messaging app, or of course you can actually just click that web browser and it'll open up your default browser. So kind of neat that they added that. And that's everything I want to talk about for now on the new Moto Razor. A lot more coming soon. Be sure to click that subscribe button so you're notified. Follow on various social media. I'll link to those down below. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching.